certainly go ahead and jump in now, even if you didn't last week. Um, also, want to make sure everybody has on their calendar in three weeks. Uh, that would be, what, like May 23rd, something like that. We're going to have a beach service. Oh. So it'll just be the 10 o'clock down at the beach at Cross from Lake Loran, like we've done in the past. Uh, but go ahead and get that on your calendar as well. We can't do a potluck this year, so we won't have that, but uh, we will have the, the beach service outdoors there. Um, before I say a blessing over the Monday, I wanted to show you all this. Uh, this is a uh, painting by Bruce Smith. Some of you remember Bruce, who's a member here. He passed away in 2015, uh, Lake Lure artist. And uh, Jim and Wendy uh, decided they don't have room in the new place to take it with them and would like it to stay with somebody in their church family. So if you would like to have this painting, let me know afterwards if we have more than one, which we have one from the early service, but if there's more than one, then we'll just put names in a hat and draw one and see who gets it. But if you're interested, let me know. All right. As we said, Jim and Wendy are moving to Charlotte. They've tired of you all, and um, uh, it's just time to be a little closer to family and a little closer to uh, medical facilities and, and so forth and so on, which you can all understand. We've all seen people wrestle through this decision over the years. Um, but they've been uh, part of this congregation now for a long time, especially Wendy, and uh, we're, we're going to miss them. So I want to say a, a quick blessing over them. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Thank you. Any other announcements? All right, please stand. service continues on page 355 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, <coughs> Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. 
you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good to see Love, does not know God. For God is love. 
God's love was revealing among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that we love, that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in this way, in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he is us, because he has given us this spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as a Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed that the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached the perfection in love. We love because we, he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear but much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So our second reading this morning from 1 John is, is one of my favorites. Uh, There's a verse in there, verse 8, that I quote at least in my head a lot, if not out loud. It says, if you do not know love, you do not know God, for God is love. God is love. And that's such an important message because I've said to you many times that everything that we do, are, or hope to be as Christians has to be rooted in love. Now, Dave and Carlyne aren't here this morning, so I'm going to pick on them a little bit. Uh, Dave said to Carlyne one day, he said, why, why does Wes keep talking about love all the time? 
what you talking about. And Carl Ann said, because we haven't figured it out yet. Which I thought was a great, great response. And it's so true for all of us. Until we figure out love, there's not a whole lot else we need to be talking about. How to love one another is so important. And when I think of love, I think of kind of, at least in the New Testament, now all of Scripture is full of talk of love, but in the New Testament there are really two that pop out in my mind. Of course, 1 Corinthians 13, Paul tells us what love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. You, you all know that one. But John tells us why we should love. He's not so much into what love is, but he says, why we should love. And his answer is this. God sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. Now there's two things going on here. John is, first of all, trying to convince a people that they should love God and love one another. Now, that may sound pretty straightforward to you and I. We've had a couple thousand years of Christian ideals to make that an acceptable notion. But in the ancient world, that wouldn't have been so. Now, if this was being read to a Jew Jewish audience, they would say, love God, got it, on board. Love one another, your neighbor, even in the next nation over? No. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not on board with that at all. And if this would be read to the Gentiles, they would say, love your neighbor? You mean the ones who are always trying to invade us? That, that neighbor you're talking about? No, I'm not into that. And love God? No. no. Afraid of God, fear God, respect, honor God? Yes. Love God? No. This is an entirely new notion that he's trying to put forth here. But he tries to convince them that they should love God because, as he says, God loved us first. And what he means by that is he says that God came to us in our time of need. See, God didn't sit up there and wait and say, well, you know, when these jokers get it together, if they can act like somebody, then I will go and offer them my greatest gift. That's not what God does. God comes to humanity in the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of all that's gone wrong before and all that God knows will go wrong in the future. And God comes to us in the midst of all of that and says, I'm going to offer you my most precious gift, my son. And through him, you will have the opportunity to be right with me and one another. That's what John means when he says God loved us first. And you could argue that the very act of creation, the very fact that we're here, is an act of God's love. God wanted to bring us into being so that we could experience what it is to love and to live in right relationship with one another and with God. So John is trying to help us understand in our minds and then transfer it to our heart, what this means to love. And he wants us to be filled with God's love. You notice the, the order there. God loved us first. He calls us to be filled with the love of God, and then to go out and love others. And that's so important, because if you're anything like me and everyone I have ever witnessed, include you all, I suppose. Uh, when we try to do this on our own, it pretty quickly falls flat, right? How many times in your life have you knelt down to pray and said, Lord, I've got to do better at this. I've got to do better. And uh, you went out and you tried to do better on your own, right? Through our own willpower and our own uh, good works and our own good deeds, whatever the case might be. It may last a little while, but pretty soon we're going to lose energy. We're going to lose focus. We're going to get frustrated. Someone's going to hurt our feelings and derail us. God never expects us to do it on our own, nor does he believe that we can. He says, first, accept and be filled with the love of God. Be transformed 
by the power of God loving us. And then you take that love out into the world. You offer the broken world that gift. Not our own good deeds. Not our own great messages or words or whatever the case might be. It's the love of God that we've experienced that we are called to share with the world. Love God and love others because God loved us first. God loved us first. And if we accept that gift and acknowledge that gift, then we have a, I don't like to call it responsibility or duty because that makes it too kind of oriented on, on the doing, but we have the opportunity to share that gift with others. And that's what we're being called to do, to accept the gift that's being offered and to share it with a world that's hungry, hungry for love, hungry for acceptance, hungry for affirmation, for forgiveness, for justice, for truth, for peace. The world craves what God is freely offering, but they have to hear it from someone. Just like in our first reading today, Philip goes to the eunuch and says, do you understand what you're reading? The eunuch says, how can I? How could I possibly understand if nobody explains it to me? This is what we're called to do. To share the message, to share the good news, to share the love of God with a broken world. And as John says, because God loved us first, we have the opportunity and the ability to love others. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we give you thanks for this day. For all the gifts you've bestowed upon us, but especially for your Son. And for the love that was so freely given to each of us in his life and death and resurrection. I pray that you would strengthen us to receive that gift. To be filled and transformed by it then in return to love you and those around us fully and completely, just as we were created to do. And all this we ask in your Son's holy name. Amen. Amen. Please stand and turn to page 358, say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 3, are found on page 387.
pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nation of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Grant, give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light perpetual shine on them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please turn to page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 service continues on page 361 with Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, we're bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Praise the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you. Join in our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we've fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. 
On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and undiving life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Service continues at the bottom of page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.